today we will learn the lesson our earth and our solar system when we look up from an open ground we see the sky in a clear night sky we can see many stars they are very far away from the earth some stars are prominent the word prominent means some stars we can easily see we can see them very very clearly while some are tiny and faint that is they are very very small and faint means we hardly can see them if you look at them carefully we find that many of them twinkle but some do not the sun the moon are comparatively close to the earth that is they are much much closer to us than all the other heavenly bodies some of the stars are very far away from us they are very very far away the sun the moon are very very close so we can see their round shapes clearly isn't it we can see that the sun is round the moon is round the sun the moon the stars the planets etc are all known as heavenly bodies all these things in the sky the planets the sun the stars are all called the heavenly bodies let's learn what are stars the heavenly bodies that twinkle are called stars heavenly bodies means all those things that we can see in the sky so the things that we see in the sky and they twinkle are called stars stars have their own light the sun is a star it is closer to us than any other stars hence it appears big and brilliant just like all the other stars even the sun is a star but the sun is much closer to us than all those tiny dots that we see in the sky twinkling they are also as bright as the sun but since the sun is very very close to us it looks very big and brilliant brilliant means it looks bright very very bright in its bright light during the day we cannot see other stars because the stars are present in the sky even during the day but we cannot see them because of the bright sunlight once the sun has set then there is no light in the sky so we can see the stars Now let's learn what are planets. Now the heavenly bodies that do not twinkle are called planets. Planets do not have the light of their own. They get light from the stars. Planets revolve around a star. Even as they rotate around themselves, it means that they move around themselves as well as they go around a particular star. our earth is a planet it gets its light from the sun it moves around the sun its movement around the sun is called the revolution of the earth so when the earth takes one around the sun it is called one revolution the besides the earth there are seven other planets that revolve around the sun they are mercury venus Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So these are all the other planets that are there, apart from the Earth, the Earth, and the other planets. Together, there are eight planets. Every planet in the solar system revolves around the sun. That is, it goes around the sun. now along a specific path specific path means it has its own way in which it travels it will not move away from that path this path is known as the planet's orbit the sun which is a star and the planets that revolve around it are together called the solar system 
Besides the planet, the solar system also includes various other heavenly bodies. Now, what are the different heavenly bodies in our in the solar system? Our solar system is filled with heavenly bodies like the sun, our eight planets, dwarf planets, dozens of moons, and millions of asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. Now, we learn about them one by one. Now, what are satellites? Some heavenly bodies revolve around the planets. They are called satellites. Satellites do get their light from the sun. We see the moon at night. It revolves around the earth. Hence, it is called the satellite of the earth. So, moon is a satellite of our earth. Most of the planets in the solar system have satellites. The planets revolve around the sun along with their satellites. Dwarf planets. There are some smaller heavenly bodies that revolve around the sun. They are called dwarf planets. Of these, the most well known is Pluto. Dwarf planets revolve independently around the sun. They have an orbit of their own. Now let's learn about asteroids. Between the planets Mars and Jupiter, there is a band of numerous, means many, 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 lots of small heavenly bodies. They are called asteroids. Asteroids also revolve around the sun. Compared to the sun, other heavenly bodies in the solar system are much smaller. The moon is closest to the earth. That is why it appears so big, although it is actually very much smaller than the sun. Now let's understand what is gravity. All heavenly bodies exert a force of attraction or a pull on one another. This force is called the force of gravity. Now the sun exerts a gravitational pull on all the planets, whereas the tendency of the planet is to move away from the sun. As a result of these two forces, a planet keeps revolving around the sun at a fixed distance in a fixed orbit. In the same way, satellites revolve around their planets. Due to the Earth's gravity, all things on the Earth remain on it. Even if we throw something upwards with great force, it finally falls to the ground. Let's understand what is space. The emptiness between and beyond the stars and planets is called space or outer space. Even beyond whatever is the stars, beyond there is vast space, that is vast open space. Okay, so that is called our space or it is called the outer space. People have always been curious about the heavenly bodies in the sky. They have always wanted to reach them. However, to send some object from the earth into space, it must be given power against the force of gravity. Because all the things are pulled by the earth with the help of the gravity. So in order to send anything away from the earth, we have to give a bigger force than what the, the gravity is. Now we all know that one of the Diwali firecrackers is called a rocket. It is packed with explosive substances. That is lots of chemicals and gunpowder and everything is put into it. 
the explosives burn rapidly. Rapidly means with full force and produce a lot of energy. The design of the rocket is such that the firecracker is pushed in a certain direction at a great speed. But, however, to send some object from the earth into space, it must be given power against the force of gravity. Rocket technology or space launch technology is used for that purpose. Very powerful rockets are used to send a spacecraft into space. A tremendous quantity of fuel, that is lots of lots of quantity of fuel. Fuel means our gas is burnt in the rockets so that spacecraft weighing thousands of tons can be launched into the space. The spacecrafts are very, very heavy. They are not very light. They are very heavy. And in order to push them, a lot of fuel has to be burnt. In the 20th century, a few countries of the world developed space technology and sent hundreds of spacecraft into space. Some spacecraft remain in space. Some are brought back to the Earth, while some land on other planets or satellites. There are man-made satellites also. So man-made satellites provide useful information for agriculture, environment, weather forecasting, making maps and searching for water and mineral wealth on the earth. They are also used for telecommunication. Telecommunication means communication between two people like for example our television our telephones, our mobile phones, all work because of the satellites that have been launched. They are put into orbit around the earth. They can remain in the space for many, many, many years. Now let's learn about India's space mission. Our country is well known for the development of its space launch technology. On 22nd October 2008, the Indian Space Research Organization, which is called ISRO in short, launched a spacecraft to the moon. The mission is known as Chandrayaan-1. Mangalyaan is another important Indian space mission. It is known as MOM. In other words, Mars Orbit Mission. It was launched on 5th November 2013. It got established in an orbit around the planet Mars on 24th September 2014. ISRO achieved this feat in its first attempt. Both these missions are unmanned, which means that there are no people on board these spacecraft. The object of the mission is a deeper study of the moon and the planet Mars. In some missions, scientists also travel in the spacecraft. They are called astronauts. Our Indian astronaut, Rakesh Sharma, became the first Indian astronaut to go into space in 1984. He spent eight days on a space station for a joint mission of the ISRO and the Soviet intercosmos. Seeing India from space, he said, it looked sare jahan se achha. Upar se Bharat kaisa dikhta hai aapko? Space scientists 
have not yet been able to find a single other planet which has life on it. Therefore, our Earth is an invaluable planet. The degradation of its environment, that is, we are not allowing the environment to grow. We are spoiling the environment. We are harming the environment. For any reason, will be a threat to its existence for life itself. Now, here is an activity for you to do. Observe the sky on two clear nights. That is, it should not be cloudy. That day, it should be clear. That is. So, keeping a gap of about a week between them. This means that if you have observed the sky today, then after one week, observe it again. Now, base your observation on the following points. That is, write down what you see. That is, the brightness of the heavenly bodies. So, how bright, how, uh, how you can see them, whether they twinkle, their color and size, changes in their position. On both nights, draw a picture of the illuminated portion of the moon. Illuminated means the, that part of the moon that you can see shining. Isn't it the moon changes its shape every day? So, what is the shape that you see today? And what is the shape that you see a week later? And note how it changes from day to day. So, if you look at this moon every day, you see that the shape and the size of the moon has changed. Now, here's an activity for the teachers or guardians to do. For the sky watching activity, call the children all along with their gardens to a large open area on a clear dark night and observe the sky. Now, here is an activity. You have to tell in which direction do these things fall. Leaves, flowers, fruits from a tree, rocks that come loose from a hillside, rain falling from the sky. Now, here is another activity. Look at the picture of the solar system and answer the following questions. Which planet is nearest to the sun? At what position is the earth from the sun? Which planet is placed between the earth and the mercury? Name the planets beyond the orbit of Mars in the serial order. Which planet in the solar system is furthest from the sun? Hey, this video was made just for you. If you've liked it, do give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe to my channel.